Today I'm going to be showing how these desktop injection molding machines work. In one of my previous videos, one of my viewers, Bill Knighton, had a long set of questions about how injection molding machines work. So I'm going to attempt to cover all of his questions here. And Bill, if I don't cover any of your questions, let me know. Before I get to that though, I'd like to head over to the sticker board. I have this uh, a whiteboard on the side of my house, and that's where I'm going to put these stickers. This is the first one, you know, I've shown this before. This is Mark uh, uh, Pressling. I love his channel, been watching it uh, since I learned about it, uh, I think a year or so ago. Okay, so Mark gets, oops, the very first spot on here. And then the second sticker I have is from Warner Berry of uh, BerryBot. And he's someone I've been following for a very long time. I first learned about him when he was doing the BerryBot 3D, which was a Delta printer, and was fascinated about that. So I've been following him since before I had my own channel. Okay, so my first two stickers on my sticker board. Uh, as I mentioned, if any of you have stickers and want to do a sticker exchange, please send me an email and we can exchange stickers and do mutual shoutouts. I was asked by a viewer some questions about how injection molding machines work that made it clear that it would be useful to dive into the different details of this machine and not so much how to use it, in fact not at all how to use it, but rather how it works. So I'm going to take you in to look at the different aspects of the machine to give you an idea of how the different uh, aspects fit together. And the important thing is uh, to give you an idea that these machines are really simple. When I first got this machine, this was my first injection molding machine, I was a little bit intimidated. I had no idea how to use it. And I was second guessing myself. I was trying to, to think too hard. I was thinking too deep about how this all worked until I went to a model train show in Colorado and uh, they had an open house at a company that made injection molded parts and they had a desktop injection molding machine almost. It was larger than this, but it was pretty simple as well. And after looking at the machine and seeing them using it, I had this aha moment of that's it. That's all there is to it. So I'm hoping that in this video, I'll give you that aha moment to realize that these are super simple and there really isn't that much to it. The process of injecting plastic starts with the ram, which is down here. And you need some way to push the ram into the cylinder. I'll give you a close up of that in a little minute. There are two ways you can push the ram down and apply that force to the plastic. One is with a pneumatic cylinder, which is what I have here. The other is with a manual arm that has linkages and leverage to increase the force that you can apply to something higher at the ram. This is a roughly four inch diameter cylinder and this ram is about half an inch. So in a, in a little while, I'll show you the calculation of pressure shown here, which is the, the input air pressure, to the force that you have on the ram. And then that turns into a measurement of pounds per square inch, at least in imperial units, of how much pressure you have injecting plastic into the mold. So, the first thing is to apply uh, air right here. And then this, I don't have the air pressure turned on at the moment, but this is the valve, which either causes the cylinder to retract or applies pressure to the cylinder. So I'll go ahead and apply some, uh, turn on the compressor, apply a little bit of pressure, and then we'll come down here and look at the, the ram end. I've applied uh, some air pressure, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I've applied about 60 psi of air pressure to the cylinder, which is not a lot for injection. I usually use it around 80 psi or higher. But I'm going to activate the valve and show you what happens here. Uh, and you'll notice two things. One is that the, the ram will come down and go into the cylinder. The cylinder is where the melting of the plastic happens. And then the next thing you'll notice is that this whole thing pushes down. There's actually some springs here, and I'll explain that in a little minute. Okay, so you saw that it pushes that down and now it releases it. Now I have a mold in here 
and there is a gap of probably about a quarter inch or so between the nozzle and the sprue opening of the mold itself. So if I activate the cylinder again, you see it pushes down. And so what this does is provide a seal between the injection nozzle and the injection mold so that the plastic uh, does not escape outside the mold and it stays in the mold. Here is what is going on inside the machine. You can see it's quite simple. This is the, a, a casting. And on the, t the front we have the thermometer that shows us the temperature of the barrel. And then you can't see it because it's on the back side, but there are some coils inside here that heat up the uh, chamber. So this is where the plastic is melted and we have the nozzle on the, on the bottom. There are a couple of interesting things about this. First of all, I mentioned there are these springs right there and there that allow this to move up and down. And that is what provides the seal between the nozzle and the injection mold. The other thing that's interesting about this, this particular machine, is that these are adjustable in and out. So that means that this can accommodate different thicknesses of mold. Right now it's fairly close to as far out as it can go. It looks like it can go, it can go out another about a quarter of an inch, but it can go in quite a bit as well. So I'm using half inch thick molds, or each mold half is half an inch thick. So that means, you know, I've never needed to adjust this because I've just made all of my molds to half an inch thick. The final piece of the whole system is the clamp, which is what holds the two mold halves together. This is a fairly simple clamp and on a lot of the desktop injection molding machines you'll see something similar that looks like a vise, which is kind of what this looks like, or that looks like a toggle clamp. My other machine that you've seen before has a pneumatic hydraulic cylinder, an amplifying cylinder, and then some of them are just brute force toggle clamps. So there are different ways you can do this, and I don't know what the clamping force of this is, but I would guess no more than about two tons, if that. So this is what resists the force of the plastic being injected into the mold and keeping the mold halves from coming apart. One of the things that people are concerned about is like, if I'm injecting with 1,000 PSI of pressure, does that mean I have 1,000 pounds pushing back against this. So what's going to keep this down? And the answer is the nozzle has a very small diameter. I don't know what the diameter of this nozzle is, but it's less than an eighth of an inch. Again, we'll do the, the math in a little bit so you can see what the actual force is going to be down here pushing back against the ram versus the injection pressure. And then we'll also take a look again at, at how that all converts to force trying to push the two mold halves apart. All right, let's start by looking at uh, what increase in pressure we get going from a four inch cylinder to the half inch plunger. So as I mentioned, this is four inches. This right here is half an inch. And what we're gonna look at, for example, is where we have 100 PSI here. We're gonna start with looking at the formulas though. So what we wanna do is look at the ratio between the cross section of this and the cross section of this. That will give us an idea or that will show us how much the pressure per square inch increases going from the, pr the air pressure here to the pressure on the plastic here. So the formula for the cross section is pi diameter squared divided by four. You, you probably remember is uh, pi r squared. Uh, so if you use the diameter, which is twice the radius, you have to divide by four and that's how this comes. But if we want to look at the ratio, basically what we're saying is we want to look at 4 squared divided by 0 0.5 squared to see what the, the ratio difference is between them. And this turns out to 64. So that means if we have 100 PSI here, the pressure we're putting in the plastic is going to be 6400 PSI, which is quite an increase. Now this pressure here is larger than you're going to get on some of the, the, the smaller machines, like the Buster Beagle 3D, which I believe is more like around 2000 PSI. But it gives you an idea of you know, how you get a multiplier, either mechanically or pneumatically through this. Now the other question is, what about going from 0.5 down to the nozzle? 
So here we had uh, the nozzle is, I said it's about an eighth of an inch, or 0.125. So that means the ratio is going to be 0. Point, well, actually, what we want to do here is take the 6400 PSI and then look at the, the cross section there. So let me erase this. And so what we want to look at is the cross section here. We actually do want to calculate pi 0.125 squared divided by 4. So this turns out to be a cross section of 0 0.012 roughly. Uh, let me. Sorry, I had my pressure over there square inches. And so if we multiply that by 100 PSI, that means moving the decimal point two places. So that basically says the force is going to be about 1.2 pounds. So what that is saying is that the force of injecting the plastic into the mold is pushing back on the cylinder by only 1.2 pounds, which is really nothing. And so there's no issue at all with the plastic trying to push the injection nozzle back and causing the plastic to spew out. All right, now let's take a look at what happens inside the mold. So we have the mold here, like so. This is one half the mold. And then we have a little bit of a sprue there uh, that is injecting into the, the mold. And then you have your part here that you're making. And the important thing here, when you're looking at the clamping force, is what is this cross section here? Because the plastic is coming in here, and then it's being pushed down here. We've got plenty of, of things resisting the force down. Uh, we have the, the bottom of the machine, which is very strong. And so really what's important is how much this plastic is pushing out in this direction here and this direction here to try to push the two mold halves apart. And that right there is what we really care about. So if this cross section is uh, two inches by one inch, that means we have a cross section of two square inches. Now, if we have a, uh, an injection pressure of 6,400 pounds per square inch, uh, which is what we saw before. We multiply the, this by two square inches, and that means we have 12,800 pounds trying to push the two mold halves apart. So you can see how this is not going to stay closed when you only have two tons of clamping force, which is about 4,000 pounds. And you have to stay well below that. In other words, you have to go to a third that. So even one square inch could be a challenge to injection mold. And this is why the injection pressure and the clamping force are the two things that typically control how large a part you can make rather than the shot size of the machine. I know a lot of people when they're starting say, well, I need to calculate the volume and see if the machine can uh, fill the mold and if it can fill the mold, I'm all good. Well, this clearly shows that's not the case, that you also have to first, quite often, look at the cross section from the point of view of the two mold halves to see whether or not you have enough clamping force to keep it shut with the injection pressure you're using. Now, of course, you can reduce the injection pressure if you have fixed clamping force, and as long as the plastic will flow, you can still fill the, the mold. I hope you found this video interesting, possibly also useful. Please help me grow the channel by giving me a thumbs up, commenting below, subscribing, and if you have subscribed, you can click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I have new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.